July 31st last year, Ailsa's life took a dramatic turn. As a 30-year-old mother, nothing could have prepared her for the devastating news which would tear her world apart. Motor neuron disease, life expectancy two to five years. A rare terminal illness of the nervous system which causes progressive weakness and muscle wasting. There is no cause, there is no cure. This is Isabella. At seven year old, she is facing a future without her mother, an unbearable thought for the family. <laughs> for Ailsa, walking, talking, swallowing and breathing are becoming increasingly difficult and eventually will be impossible. I'm grieving myself. I'm not dead, I'm still here. I made a decision to tell Isabella that day which was not nice at all. I don't know how the hell I kept it together, but I sat on the couch with her and I just said, you know, like, mummy's hands poorly, um, and I just wanted to get it better. She went, oh, good, have you got it fixed now at the hospital? And I said, well, unfortunately not. You know, they've said, my hands, it's, it's not gonna get better, it's gonna get worse, unfortunately. She went, oh, no. And then I said, you know, and then it'll go into my other arm, and then it'll slowly go into my leggies. Um, and I might need a wheelchair and stuff. She was like, oh, it's fine, we'll get you a red one for United. So I was like, yep, typical. Um, so that cheered me up a little bit, because I was like, right, okay. And then uh, I said, and then it might go into my speech, I might not be able to talk. And then it might go into my throat, so I won't be able to eat or swallow, so I might have to have a little tube in my tummy to feed me. Um, and then I said, it might go into my lungs, so I might have to have a breathing mask. And then she did say, well, oh, well, mate, if you have, if it goes in your lungs, you can't breathe, and that means you'll die if you can't breathe. And then I did have to literally <laughs> myself. I don't even know how I did it. I don't even know I didn't cry, and then she burst into tears. Then I said, "Well, you know, everybody has to sort of die sometimes. It's not going to be tomorrow. You know, it will be over time." And I even just yesterday, I lost my dad last year, and my biological father when I was um, a child as well, um, and. What did she say? Oh, I was shouting her dad yesterday and I went, Daddy, she went, you can call him Daddy, not your Daddy. I went, I know, my Daddy's not here. She went, I know, he's in heaven. She went, you'll see him soon in there. So that's her mentality. So as a child, I think you can mould them a little bit to kind of change the perspective on death, which is really harsh to say, but I don't want to make it this really scary, oh my God, you're never going to see me again kind of death. I want it to be, well, you know, I've always said that, and, you know, my memory, and our memory is now as stronger than anything. Determined to live every last one of her days to the full, together as mother and daughter, Ilsa and Isabella created a bucket list. Loads of people have raised so much money for me, fundraised. I've had a ball, I've had um, loads of different dues in my local sort of bars and pubs and that's just a few. I, there's so much that people have done and you know it's brilliant, it's enabled us to do all these things. So, and especially Florida, Disney World, um, we went there and that was just, just insane. It was very hard work for me and I was in a wheelchair the whole time but even, it doesn't matter, it was absolutely brilliant. And everyone kept saying, well, you need to rest as well. I was like, I'm not resting, I'm in Florida, I've got loads to do. So I did like, yeah, we went to obviously Universal, Disney World, Busch Gardens, Sea World, uh, swam with dolphins, which to be honest, quite terrified the hell out of me. That wasn't on my bucket list, but it's a memory for Isabella. We went to Mexico, that was just, uh, again, beautiful. Another place, again, see what we're doing. Went um, there for 17 nights, and that was absolutely beautiful. Went with Isabella, and it was, I'll say it was relaxing, but then also we did go with Isabella and she's half awake, so it was half relaxing and just half full on at the same time. But yeah, all inclusive, just paradise, beautiful sunny weather, which really helps with my disease, because if I'm cold, I can't move. Las Vegas, I really want to go and play poker there. But again, that's not for Bella, because I will just be playing poker and that's about it. Um, 
and somebody even offered me a Grand Canyon uh, helicopter ride from their business for free, so that was really nice. And I do want to meet Robin Van Persie. To be honest, I would love him to just give Isabella a kiss. She'd be absolutely over the moon. Hi. Hi. I have been out a few times and people have gone, hey, what's up with your hands? And I'm like, oh. I've got motor neurone disease and I have to go into the full spiel. And I do think this disease needs so much more awareness. I do sometimes if I'm eating um, I can't really cut my food and I can't even really particularly lift my fork to my mouth all the time I can but if people are staring at me it makes me tense up worse and I, I just I hate it and but I think if people sort of were aware more of the disease even if I said oh I've got MND they'd be you know oh okay rather than what's that and, can't be bothered with it because there's so much that you have to explain and again when I am in my wheelchair and you know there's probably a lot of people out there like me you do get stared at a lot especially because I'm so young um, just constantly constantly staring and if I stick my leg out I think I've broke my leg so nobody looks at me and it's fine but if I'm just sat there people are actually scratching their heads to see what's wrong with me because they don't know and to be honest it's the point of it gets a bit rude because I look healthy in myself then, you know, I've had my change thrown at me. I've had all sorts, and I'm like, oh, I can't get it. And, you know, there needs to be a little bit more. Other than that, I could just wear a sign on my head. Like in, when we were in Mexican airport, and I stood up slightly, and we had the wheelchair, I was in my wheelchair, and it was packed with bags, like it is in the airport. And I stood up, and my wheelchair just fell over. And everyone was just staring at me. Nobody helped, nobody. I was just like, really? I, I'm, I don't understand why nobody's helping me. Uh, even my daughter's going, why is nobody helping? Because she couldn't lift it because the bags were so heavy and obviously I can't. And it was just really, it was a bit embarrassing and a bit frustrating. But on the plus side, we've had a lot of, but uh, so many positive things and teeny little few negative things, it doesn't matter because then there's so many positive things. I can get my scooter. Um, I went into the shops, the mobility shops, to go and inquire about one. Had no clue, no, no, wouldn't have a clue where to start. Just about know how to get in my wheelchair. Um, that's it. So the guy in there was dead helpful, you know, asked this that, and the other. Um, I was like, okay, then well, we're gonna have to try and fundraise some money for one. I thought, oh, well. And then got a knock on the door, and it was him there with a the scooter. Simple task, making a cup of tea, coffee, whatever, using the kettle, filling the kettle up, putting the water in it, putting it back and putting the water back in my cup, undoing the coffee jar, undoing the sugar jar, getting the milk out of the fridge which is heavy, undoing that, it's literally like a 10 minute task for me, it's, a, it's really quite hard work and it does fatigue me a lot and that's just making a brew. So there's a lot of things that you'd think, oh, it's just your hand and a bit of your leg, but actually there's a lot of things that I can't do. Like I can't have a bath, I can't get in the bath or out the bath because I can't actually lower myself. Even like putting a bra on and stuff like that, I have to get somebody else to do for me now. Um, and that even a month ago, I could do that task. No, I can't. And again, put getting the trousers on, I can't. Getting certain shoes on, I can't. And I could a month ago, so it's just, scary how quickly it is kind of sort of taking effect if you ever get that feeling where you go because you're going to fall i get that 20 times a day in fact i'd say now it's about 40 times a day because my legs just go underneath me all the time and my arms aren't there to stop me either i've had a few falls and again they're literally just getting my pajamas out of my drawer and I've, I've gone to sort of turn around or something and just fell and my arms didn't come out last time, so I broke my nose um, and gave myself severe whiplash. So there is a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm struggling with, but I just think, oh, never mind. I like it just like playing like my Xbox and stuff like that. I can't play that, which is even more annoying because I'm retired at 30. I am bored out of my mind because I'm used to working all the time. And if I'm not working, going out and doing stuff. And now I can't really, I'm very limited to what I can do and I always have to depend on somebody else, which is amazing. So my independence is pretty much gone. I know probably in a few months of speech won't be there either. So there's so much you, you kind of playing catch up all the time with this disease. So stuff can do today, tomorrow I won't be able to do them. It's just one of the things with this disease, you never know. 
what's going to happen next. Don't take life too seriously because there's no point. It is short so you, and you don't know how short it's going to be. So I can sit here now and say, well, it's because I have hope. My hope or oh, my faith and my hope is science. And I do think the amount of stuff we can do on the phone nowadays, well, there will be a cure soon. There'll be a cure for everything soon. There'll be new brains for people soon and nanobots and all that. So I do have hope in that. My hope though is just if it's in time. So if I'm the more positive and the stronger I am, I think hopefully the longer I'll last and, and you know, the more effective a treatment or a cure I'll be. Um, and also again, like I said, if I do cry, it just I feel like it makes me worse. I'm strong because I can't be bothered feeling sorry for myself and I can't be bothered. It hurts when I cry, put it that way. I don't want to spend the rest of my life, which could just be a short term, being miserable and sad and you know, why me? And I've never asked why me, because why not? Why not me?